Amen. Shall we one more time lift up our two hands and give God thanks for the privilege to be in his presence this morning? Give him thanks from the depth of your heart for the privilege to be in his presence this morning. Magnify him and glorify him. This covenant family day will mark a turnaround in your own family. Give him thanks, give him praise. Thank him for another Sunday. Thank him for another brand new week. Give him glory and praise. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. Amen. Jesus has one overriding prescription. Are you troubled in any area? Come unto me and I will give you rest. Come and learn of me and you find rest for your souls. In the name of the Lord Jesus, before this month is over, you shall have rest in your spiritual life. Your spiritual life shall no longer be turbulent. You shall no longer suffer the scourge of ups and downs in your spiritual life. Now, when it's well with your spirit, it will be well with your soul and well with your body. That's the order. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, will write off the weaknesses of his life, but a broken spirit who can bear it. So when it's well with your spirit, it becomes well with your soul, and becomes well with your body. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it shall be well with your spirit today. Yeah. And all we need is learn what it takes for it to be well with our spirit. Come and learn of me and you find rest for your souls. Life is not ordained for struggles. He is the prince of peace. So he wants you and me to have rest in all areas of our life, particularly in our spiritual life. For to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But to be otherwise minded is death. The truth is, you are living here this morning a transformed believer. <laughs> Lord Jesus, honor your word this morning. And let no one live here without a definite encounter with your word. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And um, please, you may be comfortably seated. Understanding pathways to godliness has been our teaching series for our Sunday services this month. Let me also welcome you to this prophetic covenant family day. It shall be a day you will not forget in a hurry. We read the testimony in the first service where God stopped the scourge of untimely death in a family for 15 years. 15 years when she, he testified. The plague ceased. Before then, eight of her mother's children died in one year. What a devil. But it ended there. Every unwanted thing in your lineage will stop today. Yeah. 
every plague of confusion, stagnation, frustration, nothing working, we end here today. Every siege of failure, defeat, mediocrity, marital spare, marital delays, childlessness that is linked with your natural lineage ends here in your life today. Play with wayward children. Sweet boys, sweet girls. It's not normal. Every such plague on anyone's lineage ends here today. <laughs> Ravaged with addictions, marijuana, cocaine. Just like that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How? Whatever has been placed on that family to make it lose worth and color, today, God will overturn the table against your enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ. But the foundation of God for experiencing every provision of the kingdom is godliness. For the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. In a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but we have of earth and of wood. But whosoever purges himself of these defilements, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and made for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. God shall be turning many of us into vessels of honor today. <laughs> For if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? We are helpless without the foundation. Our building without the foundation has no future. And we, have, we are God's building. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9. We are God's building. We are God's building. Without a foundation, you don't need a hurricane. <laughs> you don't need a wind. It will come down on its own. A building without foundation will go down on its own. A believer without a foundation in godliness will go down. No one here will go down. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God changed the story of Laban's house for Jacob's sake. God caused the house of Potiphar to prosper for Joseph's sake. So for your sake, God will visit your lineage today. For your sake, things will turn in your favor in that family today. So you are God's Joseph in that family. For the sake of Esther, God preserved the generation of the Jews. For your sake, you have got Esther in that family. 
God will turn things around for that lineage for your sake. Amen. Understanding pathways to godliness. Redemption entitles us to walk in the newness of life. Romans 6, 4. We are entitled to walk in the newness of life by redemption. Whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. The mission of baptism is the empowerment of the believer to walk in the newness of life. Newness of life. The body of sin is spiritually washed away. And from that time on, sin has no more dominion over you. Baptism is a mystery of spiritual resurrection. You are buried with him in baptism. So we can be enabled to rise with him and walk in the newness of life. It's a mystery. So it's an unavoidable command for any believer that will make heaven. I'm telling you. <laughs> whether you are a founder, a pastor, you don't get baptized in water. No effort can make you walk in the newness of life. Except that book is not true. Except that book is not true. So it's not a thing to assume. I was baptized when I was eight days old. That's not baptism. That's religious identification. That's religious identification. I was born inside church, not uh, in the maternity. Is that salvation? And they mark my head at seven days. Is that baptism? No, that's a mark. After you are saved, you must be baptized. The reason many are struggling, sir, is that they are yet to baptize in water. Read Romans 6. You continue in sin helplessly. Helplessly. God gave me some very unique grace by grace. The day I heard about water baptism as an essential component of salvation, I was a speaker in that conference. I went to deliver with them. They thought I came to baptize them. No, I came to be baptized. My heart was panting on the quest to walk in the newness of life. Don't think these are religious things that people just do. You should know why you are doing it. And he said in verse 14, And sin shall have no more dominion over you. They follow those instructions. It's like you buy an equipment, you read the manual, follow the instructions to maximize the output. So it's not a church doctrine. Go to what the world preach the gospel. Whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Whosoever believes not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. It's all in sequence. Believe. Be baptized, you shall be saved, and this sign shall follow you. Simple. In case you are not sure of when you got baptized, now that you are sure of your salvation, go and be rebaptized. There's nothing wrong in it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong in it. I was baptized in Jordan. What is Jordan? <laughs> there is no way anybody will you must go to Jordan to baptize. No. Be baptized with the understanding of what he carries. And then you'll be free. In the name of Jesus. 
Jesus said, so far it to be so now, for I must fulfill all righteousness. Water baptism is one of the mysteries for fulfilling all righteousness or for securing our dominion over sin so we can walk in the newness of life. What a great time in God's presence. That is to bless somebody here. I don't know who the person is. That is to bless somebody here. I don't know who the person is. If Jesus surrendered himself to baptize by John, John said, never. He says, suffer it to be so now. I can't baptize myself. But somebody can say, well, I have a jacuzzi in my house. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You're having a bath. Somebody must put you down there and get you up. They put Jesus down and took him up. They say, okay, let me baptize all of you and then me. I'm baptized. You have just cracked a joke. That's not water baptism. I was baptized by other co-speakers at that conference. So I don't know the name of who buried me in water and brought me out. I wasn't looking at him, I was looking for Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Why learn pathways to godliness is the most valuable of all spiritual virtues. Every other gift of the Holy Spirit, every manifestation of the Spirit ends here. Only godliness remains relevant there. Knowledge ends here. Vision ends here. Prophecies end here. Gifts of the Spirit end here. Prosperity ends here. Breakthroughs end here. Healing ends here. Still worship ends here. Prayer ends here. Fast ends here. Only godliness remains there. That's why it must catch your attention and my attention. For whether they be prophecies, they shall cease. Charity never feel it, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But the righteous will make heaven. So it holds our two-way essential profits. Godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. First Timothy 4 and verse 8. It decorates the present and secures eternity. It demands attention. It demands all of our attention. It decorates the present. It secures eternity in grand styles. That must secure our attention. Every godly person in scriptures did well on earth. Abraham did well. Built an empire. Had an army to himself. Blessed in all things. Genesis 24, 1. 
and yet made it to heaven in grand styles, according to the parable of Christ, on a throne, and Lazarus at his foot too. And the rich will say, Father Abraham, he shares that name with our heavenly father. Everyone that fears God fears well in life. Does well in life. Joseph said, but I fear God. He came out of prison into the palace in grass ties. Daniel purpose in his heart not to defy himself with the king's rich food. He excelled. And this Daniel prospered in the reign of three kings in Babylon. 65 years put together. Everyone that fears God does well on the earth. And his foolishness to be shameful of what is gainful. We never bow to any graven image. Religious by God, they are mad. Normal protocol. There's nothing wrong with it. Fear the furnace, let's go. They came out and changed the constitution of the land. Everyone that truly fears God. Don't manage this, you know. Don't fake it or it will show. There is no force in hell that can make me change what I'm saying. Machine guns, machine arrows. <laughs> Full of assmen. Bandits. Everyone that fears God does well. Job, a man that feared God and eschewed evil, became the greatest of all men in the East. All this middle standing in the middle of the road is not safe. <laughs> you are in church, a Christian. Outside there, oh boy, how are you now? Are things working? I know you will say yes, we've got to go to one church like that. <laughs> where, 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 where? You have joined them. You have joined them. I told you before Covenant started, this is a new generation Harvard. Yes. We have not started. Sir, quietness as one as forever. You are not counting on people. The force that will make you give bribe is not born and cannot be born. To who? Will I be sleeping? When I open my eyes, you will fry. Why? I made the fire! Somebody's destiny is changing now. It's all in your hand. As a mission, we have never bought favor from anybody, including government. Please do this for us. You hear? Hmm? You know I'm a man of God. Abu Mani. When I say it openly, let them come and say it. If it's, if it's not so. They couldn't find Daniel at fault. What's the problem? You join them, you suffer the same thing they suffer. You come out for God, he defends you. God is touching somebody's heart now. Amen. You can't treat God's word with levity and expect him to treat you with dignity. It's not possible. Help me say to yourself, heaven is real. My inside knows it. And hell is real. Jesus never lies. So help me, Jesus, to pack 
package my life ready for heaven and enjoy a colorful adventure on the earth. Amen. 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 But nothing of value is free. Everything of value is at a cost for anyone who is interested. If the most valuable asset is godliness, then it must carry some definite cost. It must carry some definite cost. Righteousness is our heritage and redemption, but we have a responsibility to work it out in our lives. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Therefore, be not deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. We have been made righteous by the miracle act of redemption, but we are called to do righteousness to prove that we have been made righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil. Verse 8. For the devil seen it from the beginning. And for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And he did when he declared it is finished. Thank you, Jesus Christ. He did when he declared all parts in heaven and earth have been given unto me. He did when the word said and now he has the keys of hell and of death in his hand. <laughs> so, yes, it's credited to our account, but we have to draw on it by a sense of responsibility. The prince of this world came to me, Jesus said, John 8, 46, and has nothing in me. So he goes to anybody. Therefore, give no place to the devil. You have a responsibility to set boundaries around your life. Give no place to the devil. <coughs> Make no provision to the flesh. These are all things we must do to actualize our righteousness heritage in Christ. You don't know how many ants are in your house until you drop a little honey on your table. Golden table. The ants will come and say, we own this house together. Just like you have not been inviting us to a conference. Now we are here for the conference. They telephone their orders. Hello, conference is on. The golden table of the master. They just imagine they are there. You make provision to be there. <coughs> may the ants of defilement not have provisions in your environment. Not enough value is free, so let's take responsibility. The word said, he that purges himself of all this, you have to, I have to, we have to. Shall be a vessel unto honor. He that has this open him, purified himself. First John 3.3 3. Even as he is pure. 
We must come to abstain from all appearances of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 22. We must flee from every unwanted sin in our life. Joseph fled and he fled onto his throne. He will have died a slave. He reigned as king for 80 years. My God. He began to reign at 30. He lived to 110. 80 years. So far, 30 years. And reign 80 years. If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. This thing works. It must work for you. Yeah. This thing works. And it must work for you. He said, be sober, be vigilant. You be, I must be sober and vigilant because the devil goes about seeking who else to destroy. His mission is still intact, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Be on the watch out. He's looking for you. He's looking for me. We have that responsibility. Jesus said, for their sake, I sanctify myself. We have that responsibility. John 17 and verse 19. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. I took responsibility. Be not deceived, he that doeth righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Let's look at some of the cost of ungodliness in this service. One, it blocks our asses to help in the time of trouble. Ezekiah was sick nigh unto death and the word came from the Lord through Isaiah that prepare your house, set it in order, you will not come out of this sickness, you die. And Ezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord. What does he say? Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and I've done that which is good in thy sight. And this guy I have wept so, and God said, hey, go down to him, I've added 15 more years. Help came down instantly. Ungodliness blocks access to help when we need it. Isaiah 35, I mean 38, and verse one to five. Number two, ungodliness blocks the way to healing and wholeness. Healing and wholeness. Is any sick among you call upon the elders of the church and let them pray over him? James 5, 14 and 15. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. If he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. There's always a sin component in a number of cases that has to do with health, healing and wholeness. Now, verse 16 says, confess your faults one to another that he may be healed, otherwise to stop it. It has the capacity to block our access to healing, health, and wholeness. Jesus saw their faith as he was bringing that paralytic man down. Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. He just discovered behind that affliction was sin. And it has to give way, it has to clear before it can be healed. He healed a man that was 38 years in his condition. In John 5, 1 to 4, he met him in verse 14. 
go and say no more, lest a worse thing than this come unto thee. So that is, in quite some cases, the same component in our health conditions. Good news. You can always make a U-turn at any point. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. This sin. And make me whole. It doesn't cost you anything. It costs Jesus everything. Number three, it blocks access to durable riches, sustainable wealth, generational wealth. For blessed is the man that feared the Lord, Psalm 112 and verse 1 to 3, that delighted himself greatly in his commandments. His seed also shall be made upon her. The generation of the, old, the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure it forever. He had given, he has dispersed, he has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His heart shall be exalted with honor forever, 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 forever. In Proverbs 8 and verse 18, riches are with me, yea. Durable riches and righteousness. Not past tense riches. Durable riches. Generational riches. That requires righteousness to secure. Abraham, the friend of God, secured generational riches and wealth for his lineage. I'll not take as much as a latchet of shoe from you lest you say you make Abraham rich. The only riches, too many past tense stories of wealth across the world today. Why the foundation is faulty. The foundation is on the sand. Crooked and perverse means of amassing wealth. Wealth gotten by vanity shall diminish. Proverbs 13, 11. But he that gathers by labor legitimate wealth shall increase from generation to generation. Anybody can make a U-turn today. Don't cheat on your company. Steal government money, you're a thief. Steal from your parents, you're a thief. It's not where you steal from that makes a thief, it's the art of stealing. Durable riches and righteousness. That shall be the portion of your lineage. Amen. No papa will be named in your lineage. Amen. Your children will be far ahead of your riches. Amen. Their children will be far ahead of them in wealth. Amen. For the Lord knew the days of the righteous. Isaiah 30, I mean, Psalm 37. In verse 18 and 19. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. My God. 19. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. So as insurmountable 
as sin may post to be, let me show you this morning on the weakness of sin and how to be more than a conqueror in dealing with this white dog that poses to be like a lion. It goes about like it's not. It's not. It's very early. It looks very much so, but it's not. He has only one weapon left with him. Tricks. Deceptions. Manipulations. He's lost all the power to Jesus at resurrection. We are now fighting against the wise of the devil. Ephesians 6, 10 and 11. We are not unaware of his devices, lest it should take advantage of us. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. Master deceiver. Deceived the whole world. This is how he gains access. The devil, the man of sin, that's what the Bible calls him, gains access through our mind. His only access is through the mind of man. I fear lest by enemies a Satan be guided if through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in the gospel. 2 Corinthians 11.3 It goes through the mind to slay his victims. Now no pinnate, no pirati sacli rouge again about. You block the door of your mind is totally helpless. Helplessly helpless. Jesus speaking said, hear me. From within, out of the heart of man, Mark 7, 21 to 23, proceed evil thoughts that result in the following evil acts. It begins with thoughts and degenerates into acts. Evil thoughts which include adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, the lust of the eye. All these things come from within and they defy the man. Why men slept? His enemy came and saw tears. He started thinking. He can be on his bed and jump out. No. No. I'm going out. Where are you going? I must get money. So he said, oh boy, what's happening here? Oh no, we are just a gang. We go around and raid, make money, live our life. Can I join? Why not? <laughs> Lay down. They put incisions on your back, on your front. You become an agent of the devil. First out, gone down. He has money. <laughs> now he got money. The devil. He said, Why men slept? His enemy came and saw tears. A sleepy state is a dangerous state for a believer. He sows all kinds of seeds into your system with the aim of destroying his victims. For from within, it's not one devil with wings flying around town. From within, 
out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts that result in the following evil acts that disqualify people from making heaven. If you look at that list and look at the list in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 to 11, they are about the same. Be not deceived. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, nor abusers of sex with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, it's the same list. They all come from within. They are products of the thoughts of man, the thoughts allowed. Therefore, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4, 23. Set a guard around your mind and make it a no-go area for the manipulative ministry of the devil. Stop there in the name of Jesus. And its name, every name bows. The man of sin bows. Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 3. He calls him the man of sin. It's a personality. You silence him. Shut up! By the blood of Jesus. Then he packs his dirty luggage and leaves you. Guard up the loins of your mind and hope to the end. First Peter 1 3. If you don't guard up the loins of your mind and be sober and hope to the end for the grace that's to be brought unto you as Jesus returns, you miss it. Your mind is the custodian of your destiny and eternity. Your mind. He appealed to the mind of the woman. Got out, out of the will, out of the garden to the wilderness and went his way. As God said, you shall not eat of every tree. What a wicked God. Every fruit in this garden that you shouldn't eat. Ah! No, he said God said we should eat. Except the one. That is the only one you need to eat, sir. That's the one that will make you like God. You, like God. You also will be visiting the garden like God. And the devil said, you want me to show you how it is? Mm hmm. Sweeter than honey. Bite now. No, he said we shouldn't. I say bite. I came from there now. I was there before you came. Bite. Can't you see my beauty? Bite. He got him out of the garden into a wilderness of sorrow, a wilderness of woes, and went his way through the mind. Satan beguiled Eve through the mind. He wants to beguile you. Watch out. Don't let any negative thought <laughs> survive a minute. Now in the name of Jesus. Somebody said, he was hearing noises in his house in the beginning days of our ministry. I said, you are too quiet, that's why. I said, go down and say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You won't hear because somebody must be talking. Now that you are not talking, he has a right to talk. He said, eh? I said, yes. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The voice disappeared. <laughs> Nature abhors vacuum. Yes, sir. If you must not think evil, then learn how to think good. Yes, Therefore, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, on these things you are not thinking good, you'll be thinking evil. You are not thinking the kingdom of God, you'll be thinking the kingdom of this world that is temporal. You are not thinking righteousness, you'll be thinking unrighteousness. You are not thinking good, you'll be thinking evil. Philippians 4.8 
So think on these things. Is this lovely? Do I love to suffer this? No. I won't think so. Thank you, Jesus. My God, this is where the weakness of the man of sin lies. Don't let him have a hold on your thoughts. Don't give him a space to breathe. And you'll be free as free as air. That will be your experience from now. That will be your experience from now. That will be your experience from now. That shall be your experience from now. Sin is simply a product of our thoughts. You say, you yield yourself to obey, the servants ye are whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death, of obedience, or of obedience unto righteousness. Don't yield your mind to think his thoughts. So you won't lose your place in eternity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You have the victory. 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 Amen. Satan got hold of the prodigal son and threw him into the dungeon of suffering. Then he came to himself. He recovered his mind. Would I die like this without a place of burial? Would my body be eaten of my pigs? I remember where I'm coming from on the turn. He came to himself. He recovered his mind. He thought his way back home. And his frustration was turned to celebration. There are many here today. God is about turning every of your frustration into celebration. <laughs> Some are packed away from their married home. They thought it would be better. It became more sour. They are too proud to return. Too proud to return. Some men have fled and follow other women somewhere. Right there, they are regretting every day. But they are yet to recover themselves. And the brothers and did. Many will return back to their Eden this week. <laughs> Satan keeps saying to your mind, don't agree. Abba, you are a liberated woman. He said, but I'm frustrated. You are not frustrated. Don't think you are frustrated. No. He's the one that's frustrated. He can't be ruling over you. Rule over yourself. Husband, you have offended her, but never say sorry. You will lose your husbandhood. <laughs> <laughs> never say sorry. Your husband who <laughs> you say sorry to your wife, that's the end, that's your end forever. <laughs> you say, but Papa said we should say sorry. Don't listen to Papa. <laughs> Papa, don't listen to him. You say sorry to your wife. Then how would you have authority again? Then the day you wanted to say sorry, you call her. You think I would say sorry? I never say sorry. <laughs> oh God, up. He's walking. <laughs> no gate man. He just walks in. Yes, <laughs> you know a house that has no gate, man. Yes, the gate is empty. <laughs> because the man coming will just open the gate by himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he walks in. There are some decisions you made that are positive. And then when you have to implement it, the negative. Come, all of you. Anybody waiting for me to say sorry will die waiting. My own father told me, we don't say sorry in our family. Not a woman, never. My grandfather told my father, 
my great grandfather told my grandfather. <laughs> so I would now say sorry to you. Never. <laughs> you want to die, die. <laughs> that was the day of peace. It became the day of greater turbulence because of the manipulator that's unchecked. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Your story has changed. Your story has changed. Can I tell to tell threatened families? Think well. Think the Bible. Think the truth. Don't try the frustration that lies in separation. Don't try it. Don't try it. Don't try it. You'll be going deeper and deeper into things that will become irrecoverable. Don't try it. For those who have been deceived, think your way back to dignity. Don't let pride kill you. We stop here. Thank you, Jesus. Today is our covenant day, covenant family day. We serve a family loving God. He does not only care for us, he cares for our families. What must I do to be saved? Repent, and thou shalt be saved and your house. God cares for our families. Nuclear, extended. <laughs> the man Cornelius invited all his, all members of his family and all his kinsmen extended family. And the Holy Ghost fell on all them. He loves your nuclear family. He loves your extended family. As chapter 10. You have that story from 24 down what? God, our Father, is a family loving God. Therefore, every siege of the wicked on anyone's lineage must be over today. The siege of untimely death in your lineage ends here today. The siege of failure and frustration in anyone's lineage ends here today. The siege of mediocrity where no one's head is ever lifted in the lineage ends today. <laughs> the siege of barrenness that seems to go from one issue to another ends here today. <laughs> the siege of poverty, lack and want, my God, ends in your line today. The siege of business and career failure ends in your line today. The siege of dropout from schools ends in someone's family today. The siege of ups and downs. Back to the village small, come back to where you are working, back back to the village, move around. The siege of ups and downs that makes you to have no address, no location, being thrown here and there, and finally your line today.
I said earlier, God prospered the house of Potiphar for Joseph's sake. So for your sake as a believer, as a child of God, God will change the story of your family. God visited the house of labor with favor for, just, for Jacob's sake. For your sake, misfortune ends in your lineage today. For your sake, that organization where you are working will not fail. For your sake, that company will not die. In the name of Jesus. For your sake and my sake, Nigeria will not die. Nigeria will recover. Nigeria will not drown. For your sake and my sake, war will not break out in Nigeria. Covenant people are facilitators of heaven's blessings. Covenant people are facilitators of heaven's blessings. So I release you as a covenant facilitator of blessings in your line. Your family testimonies begins today. Runaway sons and daughters in your family, they are returning now. Those who have made themselves street boys and street girls, they are returning back to their senses. You will no longer have any boys in your lineage. You no longer have cold girls in your lineage. In the name of Jesus. The good news is, after you are born again, nothing of your natural lineage has a legal right on your life. Because you have now become a member of the household of God. Therefore, every hereditary disease in your lineage that is struggling to find expression in your life, they are declared terminated today. Family turbulence that's characterized, characterized many people in your lineage ends in your own life today. You will not be deceived out of your own heritage. The devil said, Look, don't ever give title. It's a church system for getting money. You know why? He wants your heaven to stay closed. And there's no way to help you than to appeal to your flesh to block your access to his blessings. If it doesn't work, I'll be a pauper today. I've been in it before I became a pastor of the church. My God. I'm blessed inside out. Inside out. Nobody deceived me. I found the truth and began trading the truth. And it's showing every day. It's showing every day. <laughs> the man before me is showing in their lives every day. The one God used to teach me is showing in his life every day. Every day. Don't let the devil deceive you out of your heritage. 
You don't come to church. You go from weakness to weakness and you are out of the faith. For they go from strength to strength. Only those who appear before God in Zion. Not before their system. Let me go and shower first. Maybe your papa will still be there when I come back. That is online member. Let me listen to the choir, then I'll go and bath. After bathing, let me take some tea. Where's the Miko, my God? That's an online worshiper apostle. Nothing enter. Drivers! And then the wiki force for everything. Force for everything. Language is changing. Thinking corrupted. Speaking in tongues dry. Because it deceives you to steal your strength. You will not be deceived anymore. Yeah. Many must pack up from where they are now after this service. Because you stay there any longer, whatever happens is your choice. You better wake up. Stop keeping another man's husband. No. Keeping another man's wife. No. Stop it. Before it stops you. Stop it. Before you damage the image, the destiny of your children. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I know everyone who cares for a chain will make heaven. Yeah. We shall be there together. Yeah. Maximum 120 years here, their eternity. My God, don't trade off the temporal for eternity. Don't trade off the temporal for the eternal. It's wisdom to invest in the eternal. You must make it. Amen. You and your household will make it. None of your children will be left behind. You will not leave your spouse behind. Your spouse will not leave you behind. Everybody here who cares for it will make it. Please guys sit down for a moment. We are running out of time. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everyone. I have people here in this service this hour that Jesus is eager to save. If you are here, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. You want to be born again. You want your name written in the book of life. You want to become a member of the household of God, not of a church. Household of God. I'll be glad to pray with you. Jesus paid the price. You only need to come to him. And whoever comes to me, I will know why it's cast out, no matter how horrible his past may be. So if you're here this morning, you'd like me to pray with you to be saved, to be born again, to have your sins forgiven, have your name in the book of life, become a member of the household of God, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Wherever you are, just stand to your feet. I pray for you right there. I pray for you right there. Please stand to your feet. You want to say, Jesus save my soul, stand to your feet. Jesus save my soul, stand to your feet. Jesus save my soul, stand to your feet. Many more are getting up wherever you are. Please get up on your feet. You are not coming to a man, you are coming to Jesus. You are coming to Jesus. You are coming to Jesus. Who will make all things new. You are coming to Jesus. Who will write your story? You are coming to Jesus. Who will grant you a, grand, a brand new beginning? Hallelujah. At the same time, there are people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. Please remain standing. If you're on your feet, remain standing. You will need to rededicate your life to Christ. Reconnect back to eternal life. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. I'll pray with you at the same time. You want to rededicate your life to Christ this morning? Please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ this morning? Please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ this morning? Please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus this morning? Please stand to your feet. Church, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Amen. Everyone standing but for the first and second call. Please stop filling that, those forms for now. 
and bow your heads for us to pray. Lift up your right hand where you are standing as I lead you in this prayer of faith. Say after me, everybody, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me on the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I therefore proclaim you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. I will serve you all the days of my life unto eternity. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all the powers of darkness that may want to draw you back to the world. In the name of Jesus. Be preserved to the end. The grace that brought you in today will preserve you to the end. You will make heaven at the end of a victorious life. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please complete those forms and pass them over to the church officials that are around with you. And we'll be glad to be part of your joy and help us of your faith. We'll be able to send to you today the location nearest to where you live. And you can attend the Believers Confirmation class. And you'll be empowered for triumphant Christian living. We have them spread all over Lagos and the environs. And there must be one close to where you live. Make time to be there like you had in the announcement. And you shall be blessed. You go for only two Mondays, 6 to 7.30 p.m. One Monday, second Monday, and then you graduate into triumphant Christian life. Jesus is Lord. Shall we all rise, please? Let the still state approach us right now. Amen. By the power of this communion today, grace to live like Jesus shall be imparted upon every one of us. It shall be a new order of grace. Upon your life. In the name of Jesus. For if the blood of bulls sanctify the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ purge our conscience from evil works to serve the living God? Hebrews 9, 13 and 14. The blood component of this communion will purge 